Dana White Contender Series 2024, week three. We're going to break down every fight. Let's get into it. Uh, Jim's not with me today. He was on vacation all weekend. He hasn't had a chance to look up any of the fights. Uh, so he said, just rip it without him. All right, let's take a look. Start off with Jack Duffy and Nick Piccinini. So Duffy's 7-0. and oh. The first red flag I have about him is, is he's coming from your eye favors, A1 combat. This has been a strategy of ours to fade these guys. Um, Peyton Talbot comes out of there, looks great, and then they put more guys from Uriah Faber's league, and they have not done well. I think they're 0-2 um, this this season, and we faded them both times. Just I just don't think the competition is that good over there. Um, so Jack Duffy kind of took a, uh, took a pretty big break here um, between 2019-2023. Uh, pretty good uh, win here. And, uh, you know, it gets the decision win against Devin Jackson. I think he's going to want to try and get, I think he's going to want to try and get this on the ground. Um, I don't think the striking is that good. Um, I think Nick Piccinini's striking is actually much better. And, and Nick is only 6-0. and um, He's got some submissions. And I, I think he's going to have success everywhere. I, th I think he's going to have the advantage on the ground and on the feet. Um I just, when I look at the two guys striking, I go, you know, the one, you know, Piccinini's striking scares me a little bit more um, than, than, uh, than Duffy's. So I, I, my lean here is, is Piccinini probably. I did watch face off today. Duffy tried to mean mug him and Piccinini wasn't having it. Like Piccinini was not intimidated in the slightest. So um, I, I just, uh, I think the, the, the official pick is going to be Piccinini. Uh, Piccinini is the big favorite here. So um, I understand that the juice is, juice is pretty high, but it's moving towards Piccinini. So a lot of other people like him as well. He's going to be the pick. He's got submissions. I think he, I, I, if I had to pick a method, I think it's got to be knockout. Here's the other thing. The, these these guys have to know you got to get finishes. Like we saw it last week with Imperato. Like just absolutely clueless. Clueless. Why would you even go on Contender Series and not like just be going all out for a knockout or a submission? Just going on there and trying to win just doesn't get it done anymore. So surely these guys this week have to know. Like got to get finishes. So, uh, all right, so there's that fight. All right, let's take a look at uh, Malcolm Wellmaker and Adam Branhold. Both these guys have holes in their game. Um, so if I got a if I got a fight where I got one guy who's you know an underdog and both guys I can poke holes in, the value play is on Branhold. But what I what do I always say about value plays? Value plays mean you just feel better when they lose. Um, oh, I, I, got, I got good value. No, you lost. Um, so I, I wouldn't jump right in and say Bramhold uh, is absolutely the play. I got some questions about him. This is a guy that's fought someone that's 19 and 27. Um, this is He's fought a guy that's 0 and 18. Um, he fought, he, his last couple wins were against, you know, guys who at least have a pulse. Um, my problem with Bramhold is he just doesn't look that powerful or strong like if he gets in the clinch i just don't think um bramhold is is gonna win the clinch now he does kind of have a, a muay thai type of style he is gonna throw kicks i think that's gonna be his most powerful weapon tonight and his most effective weapon tonight is gonna be his kicks i would say you want to soften up those legs and then set everything up i thought he looked a little weak at at face-offs uh and weigh-ins i was like oh man he's he is pretty, uh, pretty skinny. Uh, I don't know if it was just the weight cut, but I would say he did not look that physical um, uh, at at the faceoff. So if he lands the leg kicks, that could set up some other things. I'm just not sure he's got a ton of upside. So uh, that's why he's the underdog. I will tell you, I, I listen. Sometimes I I I can make bets just by looking at how they walk out to the ring or at faceoffs or everything. I thought Wellmaker looked really good um, at at the faceoffs, but again, here we are with Malcolm Wellmaker, who's you know kind of fought, you know, not great people. I will say he has a ton of amateur fights, so he has plenty of cage time. Um, 
So his striking is is uh, is pretty good. If he's gonna win and get a contract, it's gonna have to be by knockout. He's got a couple knockouts here. My problem with uh, Wellmaker is he like I I just I've seen him get controlled in the clinch, and I don't think Bram Hold's gonna be able to do that. But if Wellmaker can't break the clinch from Bram Hold. It's going to be a long night for him because I do think Bramhold's going to be able to land the leg kicks. And if Bramhold does push him up, I'm not sure he's going to be strong enough to keep Wellmaker there, but Wellmaker hasn't shown great, you know, the great ability to break and create distance, which I think he's going to. That being said, I think Wellmaker could absolutely steamroll Bramhold if he wants. I like if he wants to try and just rush him right out of the gate and put a big pace on him in the first round, I think he can. And that would be my best bet, uh, or that would be my best piece of advice to him. That being said, I, there's no way you can bet your hard-earned money on this one. It, this is a pass, and this is kind of a t- kind of a tough card here. So, uh, Willmaker and Bramhold, I would just will not have any money on it. Um, n- none of my hard-earned money. So, uh, up next, Marco Tulio and uh, Do Close. So, here's something you got to know about Marco Tulio. So, he uh, he fought in Contender Series last season, and I went back and watched this fight. I thought it was a good fight. I thought I thought he and Bulgari really put on a, a good performance. And Tulio gets the win, um, showed good striking, showed good cardio. In the third round, he gets a big takedown, uh, rides it out, gets the win, uh, but he doesn't get the contract. So I, I went back and I watched that episode, and I was like, what was going on there? That was the episode Carlos Prates and Oki uh, fought, and they obliterated their opponents. I mean obliterated put on amazing performances and Dana did not seem to be in a good mood that night uh I don't think what was it Timmy Kwamba I don't think got a contract that night uh Tulio didn't get a contract that night but when you watch Protez do what he did you watch Oki do what he did it's like eh the rest of these guys aren't that impressive so I think they kind of look back and they go yeah we might have made a little bit of mistake on Tulio like not giving him a contract that night so um what is Tulio Do? Uh, he goes to LFA and has a really, really good performance against, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, against uh, Simi DeSantos. So, um, really, really good striking. I thought he looked great at faceoffs today. And this do close guy, I am just not a believer in at all. He's six and two. He has this this really weird match. The ref kind of screwed it up. Um, they they get like a minute eighteen in there. And Fontes is like, I got poked in the eye, and the ref thought the guy like he was tapping, so the ref just calls it. The ref just kind of like screwed it up. And just look at some of these guys. He fought three and one over in Hexagon, two and two. I'm not that impressed with him. Um, this is just a massive, massive step up in competition. I don't think his striking is going to scare Tulio at all. I don't think his takedowns are going to scare Tulio at all. Uh, to me, this feels like a nice setup for Tulio. Let's hope he doesn't tore his finny it and put on a terrible performance and not get the contract and, you know, get Dana being like, you know, I'm not mad. I'm just disappointed. I think Tulio gets the knockout. Um, it's pretty juicy on Tulio. So if you want to take Tulio by finish, I, uh, I wouldn't blame you at all. So uh, if you guys could uh, do me a favor real quick, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. It really helps the algorithm out, helps us out. Leave a comment in the comment section. Tell me if you love the picks, hate the picks. Um, and we always like to share uh, what winning in the shadows is. Uh, we are a, uh, uh, there's three of us doing, actually there's four of us, uh, doing bets, uh, myself, Jim, Corbin, and Dan, um, we treat this like a, uh, investment stock portfolio and we build up smaller bankrolls we build them up to bigger ones. Uh, we always like to show, uh, full transparency on our picks. So like last week we were five and two on all of our picks plus 12.6 units. And, uh, so far... This year, we are up an incredible 138.4 units. Look at that. So we are just absolutely crushing it this year. Um, if you want to join the Discord channel, a lot of great free discussion in there. we got some free plays. Uh, we've also got a, a nice little surprise that I will be unveiling uh, Monday night on the 26th here. Um, and uh, Monday, if you're watching this on Monday, it's a $5 day over at Wager Talk. That's where all of our official plays is. We do have our official Dana White Contender Series play that's up. We always come out with it uh, Monday afternoon. Having to work out great. 
happen to work out great that today it's only $5. We're on a 12 and 4 MMA run. So uh, please take advantage of that. Um, and again, if you're not on board these plays, uh, I, think, I think we're 56 weeks. 56 weeks ago, we've tripled our bankroll. So I'm very, very proud of what we're doing here. So um, if you got any questions, leave it in the comment section. Reach out to me, but join that Discord. That's going to be uh, your first step, and then we'll get you, get you on track uh, to build that bankroll up. Michael asked, well, and uh, Bogdan Grad. Um, so Bogdan Grad, here's another guy that uh, he got obliterated by Tom Nolan <laughs> on Contender Series. He goes out, he wins two fights in a row. He looks good. He's added muscle. I'll leave it at that. Uh, <laughs> and he's facing Michael as well. I'm going to start with Bogdan Grad. Here's my big problem with him is he accepts position. He got knocked down by Tom Nolan, laid on his back, ends up getting knocked out. He's and He ended up on his back to start the, both of these fights. And he just kind of accepts position. Like, he got the guillotine. It was a nice guillotine, but he was. it's because he got, you know, ended up on his back. And it's the same thing here. Um, you know, he comes out in the second round and gets the knee, but he got taken down early. And he just kind of feels like he just kind of accepts those positions. He's not going to be able to do that tonight against Michael Aswell. He will lose again on Contender Series if he does that. Um, his offense, Bogdan Grau's offense is good, but he just, he's got to fight to, uh, he's got to fight that position. He can't just be on his back foot or on his actual back uh, every single time. So, um, Michael Aswell, so... I think this is a fun fight. I'm going to ever, ever so slightly give the edge to Bogdan Grad, but I am not going to be betting this um, uh, with with uh, with my own money here. Um, good power, knocked out uh, a couple decent fighters here in uh, in in uh, Fury FC. Um, he's got again, he's got a good amount of, of amateur fights. I think this might just be a little bit too much. Bogdan Grad's been there, done that on Contender Series, and he's had two fights since then. Um, I like Aswell striking. Um, my worry with him is if he doesn't push the pace. I, we've seen him push the pace, but then we've seen him not push the pace. And if he falls into this thing where he doesn't push Bogdan Grad forward, he's going to be on his back foot. Bogdan Grad's going to dominate him. This is this fight to me all comes down to who is pushing forward and who's pushing each guy back because I got to tell you both guys can be pushed back it's just who who's the alpha in this one because uh, whoever pushes their offense and forces their offense upon the other one I just think the other the other guy is gonna let him you know do what they want so I'm gonna lean Bogdan Grad learned his lesson and isn't gonna end up getting taken down or on his back and I think he pushes a pretty good pace um, to start off with I think it's just gonna be too much for as well I will say I don't, these guys have decent amount of stoppages. These guys are pretty tough, man. They've got, they've got some decent power and they've got finishing ability. This is a sneaky one that could go the distance. Um, I think both these guys are, are good enough to, to, to kind of cancel each other out at times. Ever so slightly in the grad, not betting it. Um, but I will be interested in the prop on this one to go the distance. Main event, uh, Puliev and Anderson. I am not sold on Anderson. And if you're looking for an underdog, kind of a bigger upset, I think you could do worse in this one. So Anderson, he seems like he's got a pretty decent amount of hype. Uh, he's coming out of LFA. And while he has two finishes, um, he's got some big holes in his striking defense. Uh, he's gotten wobbled, especially against Jay Manning, who... You know, isn't that great? Uh, but he got he got really wobbled. Now Anderson does have good good punches. He's got good uh, kicks. Uh, we saw a really nice uh, head kick knockout. However, Maurice Morris had his hands like way down, like he fell for a feint, and it was like the you you could have painted a target on Morris's head. So give him credit. Give Anderson credit. <clears throat> Excuse me, but. He's getting these finishes, and I actually think this Puliev is going to be a little bit of a surprise. Um, I, I Anderson is only six and two, and from what I watched in his last two, 
this is probably Puliev's going to be the best guy that he's faced. So Puliev comes from these Shlomenko. You cannot find a whole lot of film on him. So here's what I know. Um, he does have good power. It's kind of hard to tell how good these guys are that he has knocked out. Um, he's got good cardio. Uh, so if this gets into third round, he's going to be right there with Anderson. Um, I don't know if he's faced anybody who can strike like Anderson. That could be the big problem uh, for Puliev is if he, if he just hasn't been hit uh, like somebody um, like Anderson. But again, I, I, I just don't know these guys. Um, he had a pretty horrible rec record in amateur, but he seems to have righted the ship. So Puliev, because we don't know a whole lot about him, it could be one of those things where he comes out and he's working the jab and all of a sudden he's a little faster than Anderson and Anderson gets popped because the striking defense isn't isn't going to be good. I, 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 think, I don't think all the favorites win tonight. So if you're trying to pick who's going to be an upset, I'm just not sold on Anderson. Uh, not at all. So I, I've... Again, I'm probably not going to bet this one uh, with my own money, but I do think you're. I think you might be a little worried if you're putting Anderson in parlays or betting him, you know, to win by finish or ever. Because uh, this Puliev and what I have seen, he's pretty tough. He had, does have good striking. Stance looks really good. I thought he looked pretty decent at weigh-ins. So, um, not really sure this is going to be an Anderson uh, a walkover as the odds are kind of suggesting. So, I'll go out on a limb and, and pick. Uh, Puliev in that one. So, uh, so Duffy and uh, Piccinini. I, I think Piccinini gets the win. Probably a finish. Probably gets a contract. Wellmaker and Bramald. I have no idea. I'm staying away from that one. Tulio and Duclo. So I'm going to go Tulio by finish, and he gets a contract. Uh, As well and Grod. I think these guys are going to put on a hell of a fight, and I think the winner, even if it goes to decision, I think the winner is going to get a contract, ever so slightly to Grod. Uh, but don't be surprised if this is a really, really good fight that goes a distance. And then uh, Puliev, you know, maybe we'll uh, we'll give him a little sprinkle um, on this one. Um, it is interesting that Puliev is only 26. Um, so when we look at you know Puliev, you know he's kind of just now getting into the into his prime. This guy, this guy, this guy, this guy had his first amateur fight like eight years ago. This guy was a teenager. Uh, so um, he's kind of uh, growing into his own. I think this might be a, uh, a nice spot for him. So, all right, that's going to do it. Thanks guys so much. Uh, don't forget the five at dollar play is up at wagertalk.com. If you haven't liked and subscribed to the channel, please do that now. Leave me a comment. Good luck on your place. We'll see everyone later.